So hi, I'm Tom Spencer. I'm director of an arts organisation called Terrestrial. We were established to bring together inspiring national artists and on the ground local community groups to co-create arts adventures together. We worked for several years in Western Supermare in partnership with primary schools and an addiction charity and isolated older people in their own homes. We set up a community art studio in the centre of the high street. And since we moved to Froome a couple of years ago, we've been working here to support artists with their own ambitious ideas for community projects. Now, here in the Saxon Vale site, we've got an array of beautiful buildings. And the May Day plan is to ensure that as many of those heritage sites as possible remain owned by and for the people of Froome. But what I want to focus on today is a sort of little cluster of heritage buildings. We've got what Knotts Industries, the factory that used to be here, called the Western Warehouse, which is this vast, kind of wonderful, cavernous industrial space. Uh, and then a set of kind of old offices and meeting rooms. And there's an abattoir. Uh, there's the, the building which has uh, the wonderful name of the engineer's proscenium. It looks like two giant Toblerones just outside all kind of uh, cuddling around the silk mill uh, just on the edge of the Saxon Vale site. We imagine that here there could be a centre for arts and community. So we've been doing some thinking about how a community arts centre might function here at the heart of Saxon Vale. And for me, there are kind of three main goals, uh, three sort of driving ambitions for this sort of work. First, this can be our flagship. You know, we've seen from the success of things like the Children's Festival and Froome Independent Market that the town really thrives when it has these opportunities to gather major seasonal events, uh, wonderful big performances at the Cheese and Grain or the Merlin. Well, this would hugely, hugely develop the town's capacity for these gathering moments, these special events, these performances, because here we would have indoor spaces, flexible outdoor spaces, ways that people can move and spread between all of the different uh, sites around Saxon Vale. Number two, this centre could be a set of flexible spaces, an invitation to people who are already doing extraordinary things in Froome to come and do them here, and support for people who might not normally be able to access these kinds of spaces. Whether that's local charities, putting on workshops, artists having spaces to spread out into. And we would ensure that all of these spaces are beautiful and warm and inviting because those things don't just support the local community, they also make this a viable option for a wedding a party, a conference, a gala, the kind of events that might bring in money to help support these works. So it's our flagship, it's our flexible spaces, and it's our front door. It is our way of welcoming people to Saxon Vale. I imagine a huge amount of the ground floor being a bright, open, family-friendly cafe, a space where you can come and hang out all day without pressure to spend money, it's a place you can meet, you can gather, you can work. And we can ensure then that because this building or these series of buildings are part of the local community's everyday life, then our relationship to invite them into that workshop, to walk them down to the community kitchen next door, to come upstairs for a performance, that's all part of our vibrant daily routine. How might this work on an everyday basis? Who might be here making use of these wonderful facilities? Well, the first thing we would do if we had the green light to develop these plans would be to reach out to local organisations, charities, schools, all the different groups that make up uh, Froome's vibrant community sector. But for now, we've just started to have a few gentle conversations uh, with people who we're aware of that are doing wonderful things in town to find out how this might be valuable to them. And what we've learnt from the artists and the kind of creative practitioners of Froome is that while some of them are lucky enough to have their own independent studios, 
Froome is in desperate need of spaces where people can spread out. Spaces to run workshops, spaces to, to film, to perform, to rehearse. Environments where places can, uh, where people can sell their work, exhibit their work, share with schools, care organisations. Places where people can gather and stay warm because there's uh, such high demand for those precious you know, village halls or church back rooms that everyone is currently crammed into. And for the uh, local charity sector, there is a real um, sort of troubling fine line on how they make using community spaces add up. Because if you are trying to put on a free, at the point of service, uh, workshop or event or support for local people, then even 15 or 20 pounds an hour can make that space non-viable for you. So our model would be about ensuring that we have enough commercial activity and enough grant fundraising that means that community organisations and charities that are aligned with our vision can come and work here for free, can come and do the work that supports Froome's community and the kind of ecology of what Saxon Vale is without that costing them. And then for both charities and for artists and for individuals and for groups, we at Terrestrial have really noticed that there are brilliant creative people locally who are struggling to make the next step up in their work. Um, we've started running a series of mentoring sessions and I would love to see this place really enhance that offer. So this isn't just a room you can book, there are skilled producers and curators and you can come and chat to them and you can say, please can you help me develop this funding application? I want to make a new connection with local schools because I've got this inspiring idea for working with young people. Or they can come and uh, talk about how their work can be safe in care homes because they see that as a real avenue for their uh, the things that they can offer to the people in town. So what we become is not just a set of rooms, but uh, a service that supports community building um, through arts, through culture, and through ways that people gather in these wonderful spaces. Now, these spaces might look a little bit run down at the moment, but when you wander around the Saxon Vale Heritage Buildings, you can sort of feel the history of people working and making things here in Froome. They have these kind of wonderful old bones and I'm really inspired by filling these walls again with people making, with people discovering and exploring. And these buildings, they also have a kind of really useful floor plan. They give us a scale, a sort of scale that has worked really successfully elsewhere as community art spaces. So take, for example, uh, Rhys Stoke, who are, uh, uh, like Terrestrial, they're a community arts and performance company based in Stoke-on-Trent. A couple of years ago, they took over the old ballroom at Fenton Town Hall. It had been used as a magistrate's court. There had been no community access there for more than 50 years. And by working with local tradespeople uh, and supported by Arts Council England and their local council, they turned that into an absolutely thriving community space that hosts rehearsals, performances, events, workshops, kids' dance classes. And within 18 months of opening, they had created a performance in partnership with the National Theatre, where local people up there in Stoke were able to have their voices uh, amplified on that national scale. And for me, that's such a good example of how quickly these kinds of places can be really transformative if we give them the opportunities to thrive. How might we pay for this? Well, our first and most important funding relationship is with the people of Fruit. They are our audience, our supporters, our cheerleaders, they're the people who come to workshops and events and performances but we need to make sure that that is affordable to everyone who lives and works and visits this town. So our funding model has to be based on flexibility. It has to be based on a kind of principle of uh, value rather than price. And how do we do this? 
Well, we make these spaces beautiful so that they are really valuable as commercial hires. People want to come and get married in our grand hall and people want to come and run their conferences in our meeting rooms. They want to put on things in our bar or our cafe. But also we build into the work of this company uh, a lot of grant fundraising because this is the kind of work, quality community engagement, community co-creation, ambitious arts programs, uh, this is what Arts Council England exists to fund. It's what a series of trusts and foundations uh, are there to support. And while the funding climate is never guaranteed, this work is really aligned with the Arts Council's Let's Create strategy. And uh, I think there is a way in which we can begin with a set of uh, quite fleet of foot project-based fundraising and build towards some kind of strategic core costs so that we make this organisation really sustainable in the long term. But we keep talking about value in terms of what it means for people in fruit, rather than just about pounds and pence, because uh, these spaces, there's a real risk that they might get lost. And if we make them a place where people wonder together, where they experience transformative moments together, then we are really stamping a kind of civic value uh, into these buildings. Thank you.